Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, we are going to go through the foraging profession and I'm going to show you some amazing tips on how you can maximize this profession and get some insane money. The foraging profession has many perks, we're going to go through all the perks in this video. I'm also going to show you some great combinations that you can use with foraging and farming to make huge profits. Let's start with the basic foraging skill, picking up berries from the ground. Did you know that each region in Stardew Valley can hold up to six foragements, but it will reset every Saturday. The exception of course is the beach, the beach can hold a lot more than six. So if you're very busy on your farm, make sure that before you get to Sunday, you go to all the regions in Stardew Valley and pick up all the foragements. Not only will this get you a lot of foragement XP, but it will also get you a lot of items that you can process later on. If we take a look at the beach here, as we can see that we come here on a Saturday and we get a lot more foragebles than the other zones have, the beach can hold up to a huge amount of foragebles compared to the six foragebles that the other zones are limited to. The next thing that we're going to talk about today is a weapon enchantment that you can put on your axe and it's called shaving. This will allow you to get more wood when you cut down trees. This is totally underestimated. What I'm going to show you right now is the enchant in action. So I'm going to plant a couple of trees here and we're going to use this axe to cut down the trees. We're going to use it in combination with the forester perk which is 25% more wood and the lumberjack perk which means all trees have a chance of dropping hardwood. So let's cut down all these trees and see how much wood we get with those professions and also with the enchant we have on this weapon. Because I have an Iridium Axe, it only takes a few strikes to cut down these trees. Just a few stumps left, and as we can see, I've gotten an absurd amount of wood by using this combination. I've gotten over 800 wood, and I even got some hardwood from using the Lumberjack Park. 802 wood to be exact, and 35 hardwood. That is absolutely amazing for the small clump of trees that were planted in that section. Next up, we're going to look at Secret Note 23, and there's a quest here to bring a maple syrup to the Secret Woods. So let's do just that and see what we get. So we're going to enter the Secret Woods now with the maple syrup, and we get a really cool cutscene here, where we encounter this bear. And he's actually a friendly bear, and he is going to give us a really nice perk called the Bear's Knowledge once this cutscene is over. And the Bear's Knowledge is really cool because it increases the price of the salmon berries and the blackberries. They're now worth three times the, the original amount. That means that when it comes to spring, when it comes to salmon berry season, we can sell the salmon berries for some nice profit. Next up, let's talk about the tropical curry recipe you can get from Gus and Ginger Island. You can only buy this from Gus once you have unlocked the resort, so you have to find some gold walnuts to actually make that happen. But did you know that this recipe in particular is the best foraging recipe you can get in the game. Not only that, but we can actually cook this using key seasoning, giving us a plus 5 to the foraging skill. So if we consume this tropical curry, this will give us a maximum foraging of plus 15 as opposed to plus 10. This is a huge increase to foraging. Let's test it out. We just got 3 salmon berries there from that bush. We're now going to take a tropical curry and we're going to harvest that salmonberry bush just up from us. As we can see now, we have 15 skill points in the foraging. And we get four salmonberries. We're now going to process the salmonberries just to see what's more profitable. The salmonberry, the jelly, or the wine. As we can see here, the salmonberry wine is only worth 15 gold, so it's not worth much at all. But the jelly is worth 60 gold. And that's very interesting because it takes longer to process in the keg, so you think you'd get more for the wine, but you don't. And the salmon berries with the new perk are coming in at 30 gold. So basically, if you have a big bunch of salmon berries, put them in a preserve jar. You'll make huge profits. Next up, let's look at the tracker profession here. And what's really handy about the tracker is that if you notice there on the top of my screen, you'll see a little yellow icon. That is basically pointing in the direction of a forageable. You'll also notice a green icon on the top of the screen just there, and that will point you in the direction of a panning point. So it doesn't just point you in the direction of forageables, it also points you in the direction of panning points and also artifact spots. It's an absolutely magnificent perk to get 
if you're looking for panion points, if you're looking for forage bills, or if you're looking for, you know, artifact points. Let's use our pan here. Next up, I'm going to show you a farm that I created. So this is our winter foraging farm. And this farm is set up for the foraging profession primarily. As we can see, we have our winter forageables, which grew from wild seeds. Winter root, crystal fruit, snow yam and crocus are needed to make wild seeds for winter. Also, we have little forests set up here with heavy tappers attached to the trees. And these are all producing oak resins. I also have a forest over to the left of the farm that produce maple syrups. And there's also a little mini forest at the very top of the farm that produces pine tar. The reason why I have so many forests set up is because we're utilizing a pork that increases the cost of syrups by 25%. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell all our syrups and we're going to see what profits we get. So the pine tar, 125 gold. Maple syrup, 250 gold, and oak resin, 187 gold. That's a 25% increase, you know, to each of those items. That nets us 101,392 gold. And that is roughly four days uh, of just letting the farm produce those items on its own because the heavy tapper works twice as quickly as the regular tapper. We're now going to switch up our professions here using the Statue of Uncertainty. And this time we're going to go for the gatherer and we're going to go for the botanist and with the, these professions we are now going to harvest our lovely winter seeds because the gatherer gives a chance to get double foraged item the botanist will make sure that each forage that we get is of iridium quality this means we are going to get huge profits when we sell all these items but here's the thing it's much better to process the crystal fruit rather than sell it as it is. So we're actually going to put the crystal fruit into the kegs to make crystal fruit wine and we're just going to sell the rest of the forageables as they are. So that's one of the great things about winter. The crystal fruit forageable can get you a very nice profit if you turn it into crystal fruit wine. So if you're ever looking for something to do in winter, try to copy what I've done at my farm and you have plenty to do. <laughs> The crystal fruit wine is going for 630 gold. That's quite nice for a forageable item. So we just saw 20 of them there. That's 12,600 gold. And if we look at the other forage items, we have the snow yam at 200 gold, the crocs at 132, and the winter root at 140. That's not bad at all for forages. Next up, I'm going to show you a very good tip here with the pigs, utilizing our foraging professions. So we have a total of three barns filled up to the top of pigs. It's 36 pigs in total. These pigs also have max friendship, which means there's a 66% chance they will find an extra truffle every single day. What you see here is one day's worth of truffles that the pigs have found for me. Let's see how many truffles we can pick up here. So it's worth bearing in mind that each of these truffles are gonna be an iridium quality truffle because of the botanist profession. There's also a chance I can pick up two truffles at once with the gatherer profession. So each pig can average out on four truffles each, which is huge. I wonder if I can get a hundred truffles here today. Now we can make, process these truffles into truffle oil, but because we have the botanist pork, you're much better off to sell the truffles as they are, as you will get more money for them. So I'm just after getting 82 truffles, there is a few left down here in the corner. And as, as you've probably noticed, sometimes when I pick these up, I get two instead of one, which is really nice. So I'm after getting 92 truffles there, and that's just one day with three barns filled up to the top with pigs. So it's not overkill with pigs, it's just three barns. Let's set up and see what we get for one day. We get a total of 115,000 gold. And that's just one day, maximizing the foraging professions. That's an insane amount of money, just for sitting around the farm doing nothing. As you can see, the farm is mostly automated. So the tappers generate items on its own, pigs find truffles for you all you have to do is just collect the rewards and sell them so i'm going to leave the video there i hope you enjoyed it as per usual i'll upload the next stardew valley video in the next day or so so stay tuned for that if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do so because it'll help me out a bunch i hope you have a great day bye for now thanks for watching don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.